Hey guys, today we are going to talk about pre-release promos. I wanted to focus on promos that everyone received. Today, the promos are pretty much just random. They are random based on any card in the new set. So you can get a promo version out of any of those cards. But in the past, everyone was given the same promo. So instead of having variants, the store was given a packet of promos or the packet of promo would actually be in a pre-release kit and everyone would get the exact same promo. Now, is that good? Is that bad? I don't know, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna talk about the five promos everyone received. So these will be older promos. Now, if you're interested in the five most expensive promos right now, it would be Jace, Lily of the Last Hope, Chandra, Ch Torch of Defiance, Pretty much any card that is expensive in standard is expensive as a promo. You also have Nahiri, the Ceaseless Hunger, and Gideon of Trials. But back in the olden days, everyone received the same promo, and these promos were pretty much left on. Remember, in pre release, a lot of casual players come to pre release and they don't know, or I guess they don't care about the value of the promos. So it is very common to see these promos left at the end of a pre-release and just on the table. So we have the Whispering one, which is the new Phyrexia pre-release promo. Currently it is over $14. As you can see, it was way under $5. And when it came out, it was a dollar or two, maybe $2.50. It wasn't considered playable and the artwork was considered not as good as the original. But in time, because of ED8s, the card has just got up, up, and up. You could have a, traded a, oh, a standard card for two bucks into these promos all night long. And that is one of the good old days of Magic the Gathering, where if you identify a promo as a speculation, because you really think it's going to do a lot, you will be able to do a ton. You will be able to collect a ton that night. Pre-release at my locals pre during New Phyrexia was over 100 people. So out of that 100 people, maybe five of them wanted to keep this promo. So you have 95 copies out in the wild. New Phyrexia was a great time for Magic. It was very eventful. It was, I actually went to two pre-releases, one in Richmond and then one in my locals. Now the locals was only like 20 people, but the one in Richmond was 100, 120 people. Everyone received a promo, not very many people cared. It wasn't considered as valuable as it is today. And I don't believe anyone would expect it to be a $14, $15 card. One of the reasons that it has gone up is A, the unique art, B, it is in foil, and C, it hasn't been reprinted like a lot of EDH cards. So it's still relatively hard to get your hands on it. Plus the foil is kind of cool in person. Next, Lotus Bloom. This comes from all the way from Time Spiral, and as you can see, it was not valuable until recently. So all Lotus Blooms became semi-valuable, right? But that was recently. This promo, again, was very largely ignored, as when you go to a pre-release and everyone gets the same promo, the promos at that point in time do not have value for most people because they're just like, oh, I can go to another pre-release. And the timestamp and all of that is not, not necessarily something that people want to keep. It wasn't really a collector's item. Nowadays, where you can get a promo of any type and many people play the promos they receive, it's more... you of a collector's item for that personal, for that person because they probably used it. But back in the old days where everyone just got the same promo and some, you know, it's not gonna fit every, <laughs> every deck, right? Then meh, it was very meh. And I collected a ton of these and they, it's a very beautiful, anytime you have Lotus in the card name, it's worth taking a look at. Uh, there's some cards that have Lotus or Mox, even from the unglued sets that are becoming collector's items now where people want the cheapest Lotus, the cheapest Mox possible, even if it's not a Black Lotus or a one of the Power 9, just so they can remem 
remember their childhood and that is something that I'm seeing more and more where the demand for the cards is not based on power level but based on whether or not they played it as a child and now that they have a little bit more money you know they don't want to spend five thousand seven thousand eight thousand nine thousand on a beat up lotus they would rather just have something like a lotus bloom which is a part of their childhood but at the same time not a arm and a leg next glory this is a promo i believe from judgment and there was a period of time where the promos were in foreign languages now glory is the most expensive of those cards and as you can see it has a recent price spike you might ask what is going on with these pre-release cards that is making their price spike it comes down to the fact that the glory has not seen a reprint well, at least I don't believe it's seen a reprint. I don't remember it seeing it any Modern Masters products. And it is foil. And it is unique. So this glory has, I'm pretty sure, the same artwork. So this is not a different artwork. I'm actually going to check glory because I'm pretty sure it was in a commander deck now that I think about it. I've seen a few copies of this around. So, okay, it's not in a commander deck, but the original glory and judgment is about two bucks. So you can definitely get a very, very cheap copy of this card for two bucks. But this version, the foreign language, the... How much is a foil glory, right? That's the question. Isn't The question is not how much is a regular glory. But it does not look like it was reprinted. A foil glory is unknown. Oh, wow. Foil glory is only five bucks. So here we have... Something that probably shouldn't be $31. It may be due to a buyout. It is in Russian, I believe. Somebody correct me if that is wrong. So it is a promo given out to most people at the pre-release. Very expensive and very, very hard to get. I do have two copies of this. I'm not entirely sure how I got the two copies now that I'm looking at the price graph. Uh, it is very interesting. A glory promo. How much... Okay, um, there's not many copies of this out there. Okay, so probably given the fact that it is not common is what... Yeah, it's a pre-release and release promo May 2nd or May 2002. Wow, that's a long time ago. Anyway, the next card we are going to look at is Emrakul, the Eons Torn. And one of the questions I got from a comment was why this was not in the release. Release promos are different from pre-release promos. Release promos are not during pre-release, but the next week. And the difference here is release promos, the stores get hundreds of them. And they don't give them out because either they're lazy or they forgot or they're selling them online. So the ability to accumulate is much easier on something like release promos. I wanted to t talk about this card. It used to be your promos would be the best card in the set. That's what you received. Emiko was the best car card in Rise of Art. It was the most epic, lore-based, let's just call it epic, card in the entire set. And that's what everyone received as a promo. And that was what was expected, right? Like it wasn't like out of the norm to receive a mythic. It wasn't out of the norm to receive a mythic that was the set villain or even a planeswalker like a johnny for a release promo a johnny was remember release tons more then we got kind of the pre-release cards became less and less valuable like if you know that this card and everyone does know this this card is going to be 30 dollars plus and you can go to pre-release and you're guaranteed to get one for every pre-release you go you would get one so you're paying your entry fee in the future with this card and you get utility of it, it's in standard, it's one of the most powerful cards. Who would not go to pre-release, right? What Magic player would not pick? Okay, so I pay $25, I get six packs, and I get a $30 promo a few years later. What? Okay, I'm going to go. So, the most expensive promo for pre-release is this one. And it comes from the Hell Vault. The Hell Vault was this debacle where some stores, I believe you had to be a premium plus store, whatever that means, 
and you would receive something called a, or you receive a hell vault, which is um, like a box. Let's assume it's a box and there's cards and dice and tokens in the box. Well, some people receive $200 demonic tutor judge promos. So everyone at the event received one of them. And the, if you were lucky enough to have one of these amazing hell votes, everyone received these foil tokens. I heard a story, and I don't know if this is verified true or not, that one dude collected around, like, let's say, 40 or 60 or some insane amount of these promos because no one knew that they were valuable. If you open the hell vault, it's all value. You get so much value. Even the oversized cards are like double, like foil, and they're valuable. And this card is valuable. All the tokens are valuable. And the Judge Demonic Tutors are valuable. But no one knows, right? Because unless, let's say you open Midnight and it's the first year on the East Coast. Because I think this happened on the East Coast with the Judge Demonic. And you don't know this is atypical and you just assume everyone has the same hell vault which would be a correct which normally would be a correct assumption then you're like oh well everyone has this four token i don't want it and you would be throwing down 50 dollars on the table like i can imagine and i've been told that these people did not want them they did not care about them they did not care about the oversized cards and even the judge demonic they would trade it for like 20 bucks so they're like oh i guess this has been printed into oblivion all right, I'll just give it to you for 20 bucks. Imagine if you're at the store. You can buy Judge Demonic for 20. These are literally on the table because no one wants them, or you can trade them for a dollar or two. And the oversized cards, like, no one wants. Like, it's just some a burden for some people. How many Judge Demonics would you get? These almost unlimited supply, almost unlimited tradability, and no one in that place knows. Right, because they assume that the hell vault is the same for every store, but it just so happens your store is unique. It would be a feeding frenzy. My God, that would be the like that has to be the ideal scenario for you to make a few thousand dollars in magic. That's the only scenario I can see someone making a few thousand dollars in magic. But they would have to identify something that no one else in that room identified: a that your hell vault was different, and that there are different hell vaults. And B, I need to like go to the bank and take out all the cash I can have and just buy out every single person. Just give them cash offers. Because in the future, you're looking at a $50 token that people would have easily sold to you for a dollar or two. And if you knew that these were special, you could get there, right? Like it's not an illogical gap of what was going to happen with this card. Anyway, those are promos. Let me know if you have a foil angel token, the angel demon token, because I don't actually own any of them. But I would love to. So anyway, bye guys.